Yo, what is good guys? This is Miasin and today we're back with a really special video. This is going to be building generators from scratch. So we currently have absolutely nothing in our main deck and extra deck and side deck. We're not going to complete the side deck because it is up to personal preference. Uh, but we're going to pretty much make a generator deck from what we currently have at the moment, but also what we're going to have with Eternity Code. So that set is going to introduce two extremely good and crucial generator cards, and without them I feel like the deck doesn't really have enough gas going, but with uh, the new generator cards the deck is going to be consistent enough to, you know, be able to be piloted for a regional or ICS, or just for your locals. So we're going to go straight into it. So first of all, we're going to re be reading a few cards. So didn't work. <laughs> all right. So generator. All right. So first of all, we have Nagelfar, which is the fire generator. So pretty much this card can allow you to protect uh, any generator card, I think, or monsters. No, a card by battle or by card effect. So <laughs> you're not going to be uh, protecting your spells and traps from battle, but you're going to be protecting your tokens from uh, the lingering effect of the field spell that makes it that makes them die during the end phase. So that card is definitely interested interesting if you want to play like Link Spider, uh, Boral Sword, and stuff like that. So on your follow up turn, you just kill with the tokens. That's definitely doable. But I feel like the the card itself doesn't really do enough. Like sure, it protects your tokens and stuff, but. I feel like it is a one-trick pony, and I'd rather play cards that just directly impact my opponent instead of just trying to protect myself just to make my follow-up better, because you guys are going to see the follow-up of this deck is ridiculously strong, and that's not going to be a problem, so we're not going to go for Nagelfar, but we are going to go for a couple of other generators, and the first one is going to be Hor. Uh, that one reads, um, when your opponent adds a card from their deck to the hand once per turn, you can force them to pretty much uh, send one monster from your hand, from their hand or field to the grave, and you know it doesn't target. So if they don't really have enough monsters and they have to send like a good monster from their field to the grave because they don't have anything in their hand, that can be nice. But you have to be really uh, clever with their the use of Hor because it can also help your opponent if you force them to discard a card that they wanted in the grave. But uh, once again, also it, it says send, it doesn't say discard, but it's also not a cost, so it triggers their coatless. So mm -hmm, you guys are going to have to watch out, don't use this against Dinosaur! <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're going to play one Horde, it also negates cards or effects, which is absolutely fantastic. This deck used to lose really hard to evenly match, not going to be a problem anymore because now just the field spell already plays around it, so it's kind of cool when just, you know, one field spell is already an Omni Negate. It's nuts. I love this card so much. And you can bring it back, you can loop it. It's one of the two good generators that actually have to tribute two monsters, but it's not an issue because you're just tri you're just tributing the tokens, which are super free anyways. So uh, that's that. Uh, we're not going to go for a Fraudy. That, that card's a fraud. <laughs> Don't play it. <laughs> it's really bad. Like, Odgard is just infinitely better. It, it lets your opponent draw cards. Like, sure, it can be cool with, um, I think there's like a, I think it's the card's Heavy Slump or something like that. When your opponent has like too many cards in their hand, they just have to like put everything back into the deck, shuffle and like draw two. So obviously if you make your opponent draw like 65 billion cards, that, that card could be nice, but uh, no, making our opponent go plus is uh, not usually not the way of the Shinobi, so we're not playing that one, but we're definitely going to be playing the one that makes us plus, the plant one. So pretty much this card, when it's special summoned, you get to add any generator card or uh, a plant from your deck to your hand, but on honestly you're not searching a plant, because when you're summoning this, it's usually during your own turn after your normal summoned. So, you know, if you're searching Lone Fire Blossom after you already nor normal summoned, it's underwhelming, you're not going to do anything with it, and there are honestly any, there are not any plant that actually work as hand traps. So we're only searching the generator cards, which is fine, because the generator cards are really, really good. But honestly, I think this card as a one-of is definitely enough. Actually, I don't want to be drawing multiple generator cards because they're all bricks. They do nothing in their hand. The only one that actually do uh, like allows your generator cards to do something in the hand is Double Guz, the machine guy, which basically just reads you can tribute a monster, special summon a generator card from your hand. But once again, since we're not even trying to go that far, we're not even going to be playing Double Guz. So yeah, I need Hawk can negate uh, summons, but... There is always better than negating summons. You can side it honestly against the uh, pendulum if you're going first. You just uh, you just wait until they go skill skill and then you go oh, okay uh, generator uh, boss uh, fight and then you activate the field spell. You summon this and then now if they commit to their pendulum summon they lose. Uh, but yeah, 
uh, that's pretty much it for the ones that we're not playing, I think. But now, uh, the ones that we're actually going to be playing, there's Utgard, which is a really, really good one. So this pro probably has the simplest effect out of all of them. So you just tribute two generator monsters and banish one card on the field. You do have to target, but it is very free. Like, since the tokens are free, the banishing is also free, and banishing a card is really, really impactful in 2020. I mean, it's always been impactful, but especially when most of the cards have built-in protection to destruction, like Thunder Dragon Colossus, being able to banish it instead, very impactful. So we're definitely going to be playing it once again, just a one-of. You don't want to draw it. You always have access to your generator cards very easily. And, um, yeah. So we're also going to be playing Wanahela. I love that card. I think the design of the card is just absolutely fantastic. If you guys are Disney fans like me and you watch Maleficent, um, she looks exactly just like Maleficent. I mean, come on, like the horns, like the cape, the the like the scepter or the staff, the skulls, like the dark. Ah, my, I, I love her so much. And also her effect is amazing too. So it's um. It's one of the rare scenarios where a card just do not only looks good, but also is extremely good. Because she might be one of the best generator cards, honestly. She just tributes a monster and brings back another generator from your grave with a different name. And that's huge, because there's a card that we're going to be playing that's going to be like a one card, um, one card instant comeback in the grind game. And it's super, super easy to access. So being able to always bring back Hela and then bring back another monster, get a search with a plant girl is extremely impactful, so Hela is definitely almost the center of the deck to a certain extent. It's the grind card of the deck, so Hela is insane. And Lopter, there's absolutely no debating that. We're playing three Lopter, Shadow of the Generator boss, no matter what uh, people say, and the reason for that is simply because it's the engine starter. You can special, su you can special summon by attributing uh, um, a generator monster, you can special summon a level 9 generator from your deck, the effect is not negated, and that is a quick effect during the main phase. So it can be your main phase, your opponent's main phase. That is also uh, that that's just an insane effect. And also your uh, your generators gain 1,000 attack or defense during your opponent's turn only, and that includes the tokens. So just try to imagine a token with 2,500 attack and defense. Like what? <laughs> like it's crazy. A lot of a lot of monsters have like less than 25. So it, you you won't, you won't even be able to like jump over the tokens and stuff like. Baiting like the the effects of the generator is going to be completely impossible, and you're also it's just it's just too much uh, threats uh, too many threats on your opponent. So Lobster is definitely a huge card, and also guys, it's a level four fairy. <laughs> Keep that in mind. So yeah, and Jurgenman. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name, but we're going to be playing three for now because we currently have nothing in the extra deck anyway. So might as well um, try to. Uh, like uh, make it like full for now so yeah and then there's the generator quest which is like an okay card um however unfortunately that card rewards you for like incorrect deck building i want to say because you have to reveal a generator monster from your hand uh to be able to search two spells and traps from your deck to your hand so the issue with that is that once again since we're not trying to uh, be drawing like too many generator monsters uh, there is no guarantee that we are even going to have any generator monsters to reveal to use this card. So playing this card as more than one is completely incorrect. But playing this card at one is definitely correct because you can always search it with the plant girl. And if you have a generator monster that you don't want in your hand because you really need it to be in your deck so the boss field spell can special summon it later on, then that card is amazing, especially since it gets you two interruptions single-handedly, because it gets you the field spell, which is an interruption since you just special summon the castle, uh, tribute two cards, uh, banish something else, and then you get also the boss fight, which is an extremely good card, by the way, which pretty much activates the field spell again from the deck or graveyard, by the way. So even if you have multiples of these, it's fine. And then your opponent draws one card, and the card, the field spell already uh, resolved at this point. So the draw one card is actually it's it, like it's not really a drawback because it instantly triggers the field spell uh, regardless of if your opponent is trying to like search or not so it's a proactive way of getting your engine going which i really love and um 
uh, yeah, so it's just, it allows you to summon another generator again, because the effect of the boss uh, stage to special summon a generator from your deck is actually not a hard once per turn, it's a soft once per turn for the physical copy of the field spell. So if you can activate multiple copies of the field spell during your opponent's turn, you can keep special summoning the generators as long as your opponent is doing any form of searching. So that's really, really fantastic, so we're definitely going to be playing three of these cards. And now, unfortunately... Konami didn't really spoil us that much with the other generator uh, spells and traps, boss loot and uh, bite. No, I don't like them. Uh, they're too specific. They don't achieve anything on their own. I don't really. I'm not really a big fan of that. Even the boss uh, boss room, honestly, is just like, like yeah, sure, it does allow you to uh, protect. Um, your boss stage, your field spell from being ogred or something. So that's always nice, especially since it's searchable. And also, you can protect your monsters from like effect negations and stuff like that. And you know, both players have to draw one card. It can get you deeper into your engine or anything. Why not play one, alright? Just one, and that's it. Let's just not talk about it. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for the generator uh, cards. However, the engine is not done yet, because we have many more ways of uh, getting your engine going. And one very simple way of getting access to your field spell is a guaranteed terraforming. So that has the simplest effect in probably all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Add, add one field spell from your deck to your hand. Literally, the uh, like... It's, it's like on the level of reinforcement of the army. It's just add one level 4 lower one, mar, uh, warrior monster from your deck. I was gonna say Mario. <laughs> Wario, Mario, warrior. Oh my god, I'm really, really tired today, guys. Even though I had like 65 hours of sleep, I'm still really tired. Maybe that's what caused it. <laughs> Anyways, um, terraforming. And also it goes along with the its cousin, Metaverse. Which unfortunately is at 1 right now. Press F in the comment in the comment section. But uh, Metaverse terraforming and 3 field spells with 3 copies of boss fight. Uh, we currently have quite a lot of field spell, guys. How about we add even more, alright? We're going to be playing Trap Trick in this deck. So, Trap Trick is going to be able to set this card directly from your deck. <laughs> directly from your deck to the field. I feel like Sam now. <laughs> and this card is a one-card engine, so I mean, why wouldn't you play Trap Trick? If you have Trap Trick with a bunch of, like, interruption cards, then, you know, eh, Merry Christmas, you win the game. <laughs> it just gets everything going, your opponent can't play the game, and then you kill him next turn. And, uh, yeah, like, everybody, everyone's happy, except your opponent, which is what you want, by the way. You want yourself to be happy, you don't want your opponent to be happy. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very interactive game, guys. <laughs> but, yeah, that's pretty, much, um, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. But, also, we are not done right here, because we can also play a really cool card, such as Condemned Witch. So guys, when I told you that uh, Lopter was a really cool card, it's a level 4 fairy. Condemned Witch just so happens to summon level 4 fairies during your opponent's turn, which is pretty sweet. And also it doesn't have to special summon on your own turn, which is also cool because it allows you to play a card that I really like, which is Pot of Duality. So honestly, except when you have to use Lopter during your own turn, or when you have to like exceed summon during your own turn, you don't really do a lot of special summoning during your own turn. Most of the special summoning you do is actually during your opponent's turn with the field spell or even Condemned Witch during your opponent's turn or Lope Turn. I hate pronouncing those names! <laughs> or like, is this like a foreign language that I just don't uh, know about? But anyways, yeah, you special summon Lope Turn during your opponent's turn, so Pot of Duality stopping you from special, summon special summoning, not that big of a deal, honestly, it's not that bad. And also being able to like uh, dig further into your deck, make sure that you never break, always get your stuff going, very important. And um, speaking of ways to get your stuff going, we're going to be playing Upstart because that's just free. There's no reason not to play it, it's just extremely free. And we're also going to be playing 3 Pot of Extravagance because quite frankly we don't really need the extra deck that much. I mean you guys are going to see soon enough, I'm going to be filling it up with a lot of like... It looks like unnecessary, like, garbage, honestly. It's just not needed whatsoever, so... Yeah, it's just... Yeah, <laughs> Pot of Extravagance is very good in this deck. It's It almost reads Draw 2 with no drawbacks. And there are literally no other cards that uh, make you draw in the deck, so... It's, um... It's good. It's pretty good. I don't understand why people don't play it. I mean, I almost played my, uh, a card of Demise version uh, of this deck. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work well because you, you discard in the end phase very often. 
but you know <laughs> it's you know it's always good so yeah oh and by the way i played uh, condemned witch and i didn't uh, show you guys the forbidden cards yet so we're going to go into them very fa no we're not going to be playing the legs and the arms of exodia <laughs> um it searches a forbidden quick play spell. Unfortunately, I was very down to play a little uh, Exodia engine, you know, to make rank 2s and stuff like that in the deck. But, you know, we're not going to be able to do that, very unfortunately. But we're going to be able to be playing 3 Forbidden Chalice. That card is just uh, generically really good. Uh, you know, it basically negates a monster effect and... Um, the effect is very simple, I mean, when it's searchable by Condemned Witch, why would you complain? It's just one extra interruption. So Condemned Witch being single-handedly a Forbidden Chalice, and then, you know, a special summon of Lopter during your opponent's turn, which gets you the plant, which gets you the field spell. That's like the worst case scenario, by the way, that's just one card, and it's already a plus two. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm pretty down, <laughs> I'm, pr I'm always down for plus twos, so... Uh... Yeah, uh, we're definitely going to be playing a Condemned Witch uh, package. So we are not done with the deck, we still have to fill it up with 8 cards. So since we are playing Trap Trick, we might as well be playing some cool uh, Trap cards. So how about Compose, huh? We can play 2 Compose, I think 2 is enough. We already have enough ways to deal with monsters. Uh, we can also play Heavy Storm Duster. But Heavy Storm Duster might not be a good idea in the main deck. Because, you know, there is no guarantee that you're going to be playing against a back row heavy deck. And honestly, you don't even need to be playing heavy duster to like grind with a back row heavy decks anyways. Your engine is just so oppressive that I feel like you always have the upper hand anyways. And you know, Boss of Lies also allows you to banish any card on the field. It doesn't necessarily have to be banish a monster. It's not like the Fraudy or anything that has to destroy monsters. So, I think we have, like we're probably covered for like, um, for that... Uh, so yeah, and also we are going to be playing Infinite Impermanence because we have space, so why not? Eh? It's pretty good. Uh, that's usually what I try to do, honestly. Uh, you know, whenever I'm playing Trap Trick, I just want as much utility as I possibly can get. So that's pretty much all I can see for now. Except that I don't think we are done yet. We also have three cards left in the main deck But we before we figure it out. We're just going to do a little bit of extra deck stuff uh, first So three VFD is a given and three enter Blathnir is also a given because of extravagance being able to like banish multiples which kind Might be a problem for some but for me It's not really a problem because I easily win with just simple beat down, so you know it's really not a problem. And also one heart earth. When are you ever summoning this? Never, literally never. So uh, yeah. And also the other kind of Xyz monster is that you can summon in this deck are four because you're actually playing two level fours. And honestly, Lopter, uh, he ends up surviving the the field very often. I mean, you don't have to tribute him. You can just tribute a token to summon a level four. And then next turn, when you have a level 4 um, like uh, follow-up, you just normal summon it and make a rank 4. So we can definitely do that. We can play a couple of uh, rank 4 monsters. Uh, no, we cannot play Bahamut Shark because unfortunately Fire and Dark is not water. <laughs> but we can play... Uh, where is the goo? Uh, I mean, Time Thief is a decent one, but we don't play Shade Brigandine, so meh. And we can play Ragna Zero, but no, it's not that good because... You know, you only boost your own attack, not uh, reduce the opponent's attack. I'm looking for one card specifically. No searching. Uh... <laughs> Wait, hold on. Where was it? Um, the guy that searches a rock. No, I'm definitely not trying to search Udgard. But we're going to be playing... You know, might as well play one Baguska. I don't think it's going to come up ever, but hey. Uh, we're going to be playing... Where is he? Oh my god, his attack is so low. Come on. E Daigusto Emerald, where are you? Ah, 18. Ah, everyone's 18, man. Everyone just turned 18 uh, this year. That's that's cool. But we're going to be playing one Daigusto Emerald because you can constantly shuffle back your um, your engine cards from your graveyard to your deck. I mean, your uh, generator monster, so your boss stage is always live. Always special summoning from your deck. And uh, seriously, guys, it's really not that hard to even uh, do that. It's, it's really easy, so... Yeah, that's pretty much it for the rank 4s, I think. I don't think we need to, like, commit to, like, Dweller or anything. That's very unnecessary, so, <laughs> yeah. And we're going to be playing a few links. I don't think you need them, but, hey, just for fun. So, oh my lord, we're, <laughs> we're definitely not going to be go far uh, searching every single link uh, 
um, one by one, so yeah, and this is definitely not how we do it. So, Link 3, I know there's a really good one in this deck, it's Black Luster Soldier of Chaos, and the reason for that is because a level 9 is always superior to level 7, so having the full power Black Luster Soldier is uh, pretty good. Honestly, it's uh, it's pretty fantastic. And there's also another Link 3 that we can play that's really, really good, that uh, we actually make during our opponent's turn, is Unicorn, because we get to play IP Mascarena. And if I can even find her, okay. So that makes for a complete extra deck, but we also still need to fit in the main deck with three more cards. So guys, what do you think is going to be a good idea for three more cards to add? Three back to the front. I think now the deck is going to be infinitely smoother because now discarding the cards is no longer like something bad for you because you just keep bringing them back and trap trick is just way more oppressive i feel like it is more important sometimes to focus on the consistency and your engine instead of just trying to interrupt your opponent too much and stopping them from like playing like at all because like you can already like be really inter interruptive anyways so back to the front is definitely a good idea uh you see back to the front even being able to summon back your own lopter so th these these two cards, it, it's just insane. You tribute it, get get the plan, search the field spell, activate it, summon like a level level nine, get your two tokens, uh, interrupt a card by banishing something, and then back to the front, bring back the level four, uh, keep doing everything. It's just it's crazy. It, like back to the front is really needed in this deck, and all the draw power cards, all of that. I feel like you know. If you play the deck like this, you're never going to be breaking, honestly. You know, once again, Extravagance, the opening 5 is not the best, even though, you know, boss uh, boss, uh, boss fight and trap should get you there. Extravagance just getting you that insane pressure by getting Condemned Witch, which uh, doesn't really lose to Valor, especially when you special summon during your opponent's turn. I mean, Valor only works uh, on your own turn. So, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you lose the access to Forbidden Chalice, even, even you know, we already searched it. So, yeah, and once again, another really good hand, but, you know, the issue is always drawing the monsters. That's like a paradox with this deck. You're not really trying to draw monsters, but you have to play them, so you have to accept the, the, in, the, the potential inconsistencies. And uh, that's a problem that can be applied to every single deck. So, uh, yeah, you know, honestly, every single hand looks like it can almost be playable. You know, once again, we have five cards, we duality into the nuts. It's the crack, it's broken. <laughs> it's We get this and boom, we have everything going or we just can add uh, anything like this and then uh, put it back into the bottom of the deck and search the field spell and the trap. And boom, that's uh, multiple four interruptions actually. Double chalice with the field spell that summons the first uh, the first Udgard, and then whore that negates uh, anything. You know, pretty good. And then territory. I'm not a big fan once again, but yeah, it's just because I'm trying to play more cards. But uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to try to leave the YDK file in the description if you guys want to be testing the uh, this deck uh, for yourselves. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I will try my best, as always, to answer every single one of your comments. And uh, till then, it is Yasin signing out. Peace.